everyone. Welcome back to the show. It's Geekonomics. We're back. Another week, another show. Brian's here. I'm here. We have a bunch to talk about. We are talk about the X Men '97 trailer. Yes, which we didn't get to last week. No. Uh, we have some other stuff. Wrestling. I, uh, wrestling. The P- PLE happened in Path, Path, Australia. Perth. Path. Perth. Path. Australia. Perth. Uh, over the weekend, and uh, I went to Raising Cane's yesterday. So we're gonna get your review. So we'll get the an in-depth review of that. I, I, you know, it's interesting. It was a spur of the moment thing. There was not a plan for it. I'll tell. Well, I'll get into yes, it when we get yes. to it. All right. But there's a whole bunch more. But first off, before we get into anything, yes, Mark. This weekend, nice pregnant pause in Manchester. <laughs> yep. At the Army Navy Club. Uh huh. You want me to finish There's a it? show. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to start going. You're just not saying anything. Well, I don't want to step all over you. Manchester, I'm giving you big pauses to step on. Manchester Comic and Toy Convention. This there Sunday, March 3rd, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admissions, 5 4 p.m.? 4 p.m., baby. Oh, my goodness. Admissions, 5 bucks to get in. But if you have a child that's under 10, they get in for free. What? Um, special guests will include Ron... Swanson? Ron Rudat and Richard... Marezo and Matt C. Ryan. You got that one easy. Yes. <laughs> um, so, th- three special guests. That's Matt C. Ryan. Matt, Matt, Matt C. Ryan. Matt C. Ryan. Matt C. Ryan. Matt C. Ryan. It's like Matt's Mattis Yahoo. Um, they will there'll be <laughs> Matt a Ryan. cosplay contest for kids and adults. Yes, and, and I, if you I dress think... up as Matt Ryan, you automatically win. Yes. Um, there's... There's great prizes. That's it's not a, true. it's a great that. time. This is one of the best shows in Manchester, hands down. <laughs> one of the best shows ever. What are you laughing at? What is going on? Why That's are... like saying we're the best podcast in Enfield. We're the, the only. best toy show in Manchester. Yes. There are no other toy shows in Manchester. You don't know that. I do know that. You don't know that. I do. Well, Name they, name another toy show in Manchester. They are the best because no one wants to compete with them. <laughs> That's how great they are, Mark. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Jeez, you know, I knew going in this show is going to be a. That's just a, that's the top line. You need to tell Andrew to put that on the next flyer. Yes. The number one rated toy show in Manchester. You know, back in the day, we used to say we were the the top rated show in. We're the number one rated radio show in Enfield podcast. Yeah. Why? Who's, who's going to compete with that? Exactly. Who's going to say any different? Right. Manchester, hands down, is one of the best shows We're the in the area. We're the number one nerd podcast based out of this studio. Now, the reason I also say in Manchester, that area. Connecticut. Because this past weekend, we had the East of the River show. Yes. Hands down, one of the best shows in Enfield. <laughs> number one rated. Number one rated convention. Comic book and collectible show on Enfield Street let le- me tell this you, past weekend. Let me tell you. That this weekend was a rager. It was a great <laughs> success. Words you don't associate with rager. comic book shows. It was a rager. A rager. It was a rager. There's so many box diving going on. It was oh, crazy. God. People were jumping off the walls. People were up to their <laughs> knees in box diving. Um, no, in all honesty, though, this Sunday, this past Sunday, this was one of the best February shows mm. in memory. Uh-huh. I, I think the last February show that was massive was right before COVID, was in 2020, and then COVID happened. Because everyone knew they were being locked down. They had the feeling that lockdowns are coming. This show had a lot of families, which is uh-huh. what we want. A lot of kids, a lot of kids, yeah. what we want. Forcing their parents to spend money. What we want. <laughs> um, I want that toy. This, this show was the moment we opened at 9 up until 2.30 was just a flow of people. It never really slowed down. Yeah. 2.30, it kind of ended, which is fantastic. From the windows to the walls, even? Yes. Yes. Uh, Matt Ryan, he 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 was talking to kids. He was making— Yeah, he, he said he killed it. He said he, it did good. he did pretty good. Dude, he did real good. He went in not expecting to do anything, and he did pretty good. But he said that's the, that he has to have that. Thought yeah. process because when he gets all excited about things, then he gets he gets his hype gets his hype train too high and then he crashes. This show was fantastic. Um, um, I was told over 300 people showed up. Now that's 
three hundred plus because kids get them for free. So yeah. you have no way of tabulating that. But well, I, I mean, saw, you could count heads. I um I saw a lot of kids. Yeah. Um and it, yeah, it was a fantastic show. We saw a lot of people who came actually came up for the first time. Yeah. That uh, through Facebook, they're like, Brian, you're always inviting me to this. I finally made it out. Well, so here's what I'm going to do. That was really I cool. don't know if anyone else has done this yet, but I'm going to say I'm the first person to do it. You deserve all the credit for this. You paper I, the town of Enfield with flyers. I don't deserve the credit. Well, you deserve some of the credit. Well, I do do a lot. You do. For pr- I went out on Friday. You paper the town red I with do. flyers. I do. I do. I'm really... If people don't know this show is happening and the week leading up to it... <laughs> They're not walking around town. They don't leave their house because you basically, you're almost to the point now where you're about to start leaving them in people's mailboxes. Like, I, if I could, I would. Just going house to house, driving around. Um, I did put out signs that Friday. I did put out street signs. Yeah. Which I'm sure helped because people driving around want to do something. And yeah. tag sales are becoming, tag sales. That's, Starting to warm up. Stag tail season. Yeah. That's how people notice. So. I did did a lot. Thank you, Mark. I did do a lot of signs and flyers, yeah. and I did social media posts constantly. But it was great. Yeah, it was well worth it. I, I mean, bet Scott was happy. Scott was very happy. We were. I ev- mean, not completely happy because I didn't end up going. But that's was, what we got to talk about, Mark. I get there was the extenuating question. circumstances. I get the question. Where's Mark? Mark hasn't come to these. Is he mad at me? No. no. I've told him reasons why. Um, also... I told him why I haven't been there. It's not like it's some secret. You have a guy. Matt Ryan doesn't need my help, so I haven't gone. You have a guy named John. He's a matchbox guy. A Hot Wheels guy. Hot Old Wheels. Old guy. Older guy. He has been looking for you. He was like, where is Mike? <laughs> is he okay? Is he sick? No, he's fine. He hasn't come to these shows. I got stuff for him. He is... I, it's, it's, he really wants to see you. Well, I have no reason why I was going in the first place was to help Matt with his booth. <sighs> Since he started doing the Brenda book, yeah, uh, he hasn't really been promoting his other stuff. He's just been focusing on Brenda. Right, right. So doing good for that. It's kind of like he doesn't need two people. Mm-hmm. There's other reasons that I won't talk about on the podcast. Well, that go along with that. Are but, you going to make an appearance? Just come to the this uh, Manchester one? I don't know. I don't know. Just come and say hi. Walk yeah. around. Yeah. I'm also in Springfield now. It's not like it's conducive to drive all the way to Manchester just to huh. walk around and wave at people. Yeah, but you know a lot of people, so it'd I be do. Like, but it's like you it's, get to if hang I'm not, out, like go shopping, doing something there. It's kind of hard to convince. The uh, homestead that I'm just going to take off to just walk around and wave at people on a Sunday when we're I could not be. Say, you're not at a parade. Yeah, what I'm saying, but it's like, I mean, the, to be honest, that's what they would think. What if you were to like? I know you're doing your booth. Yes, but if you weren't doing a booth, I've gone to shows. But I know, but like that, I I think in my head that's what they think we do at these shows. Is just go there, and just like sit around and hang out and chat for six hours and then come back. And it's like, why are you just doing that and not hanging out with me? Oh, uh, I mean, Sundays are kind of like the day to do whatever we want. And like, Oh, I know, but it's just like, like, I feel like I have to like, I, in my, it's more in my own head that I just feel like I don't have a justification to just go. Right. You want to be home. I get it. Well, I want to be home, but then also if like if I'm going to a show, I want to be doing something. I don't want gotcha. to just go and just like I'm not going to go and buy books or anything. I'm not going like, to go and do stuff. Way back in the day, before if I was I... still like collecting stuff, like I was in the back of the right. day, I would, but I'm not. Before so. I was a vendor, I would go to the shows and visit yeah. you and Matt and yeah. whoever. I mean, now that I sell stuff, it's yeah. a different story. But yeah, um, that's fine. Well, if you can make it, great. If you can't, that's fine. Yeah. Um, We do, um, I'm going to be part of, and we'll mention this real quickly, we'll move on, but Cliff's Con is going to be doing the Bristol show at the uh, hotel. At night. And it's going to be Good Friday. After dark. It's going to be after dark. Cliff's um, Con after dark. 6 to 10 p.m. And it's going to be the first time we're having it on a Friday night. Mm. Um, So I will be doing that. I'm very excited to do this. Unfortunately, Norman Katz can't make it. I did look into it, and he's not he's not uh, available. You know the the Safari Brothers sell his. his they do, artwork. but I'm saying it was a there was a possibility. I was in negotiations to actually get Norman Katz to appear. 
Yeah. But uh, his handler is already working uh, for Cliff doing caricatures. Yeah. So he can't be doing that and also be taking care of Norman Katz at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. unfortunately, Norman can't make it. You know, if that's a show, you, you could you could even bring Claire because they have a restaurant right there. Yeah. You, you can have dinner. Sure. You can have dinner, walk around, say hi to everybody. Yeah. That's a... I'm actually going to see if I can get Allison to go with me on that one. Wow. Yes. I I said, if this is if anyone you want to help me with, this would be the one. Yeah, that's the one you need help at. That's yeah. a big... Because you get hungry, and it's a hangry. long... It's yeah. a four hours. I mean... I mean, it's, a, it's not as bad as, like, a usual show. Not a, Yeah, like, a Sunday was... Like, normally a Sunday, it's usually, like, because you're there... Ten to three. Because if the show starts at nine, per se... You have to be up and set up by like eight thirty, right? So that means you have to be there for like seven thirty. Yeah, I'm usually there. Which means you have to leave the house around like six. Yes, yeah. Stay at the Bristol. This one. So that's a little different. I got to set up around three. Yeah. So I can leave the house at two thirty, get there for three, or leave at three, get there at three thirty, because it doesn't start at six. Like plenty of time. Yeah. Anyway, that's coming up near the end of the month. We'll talk about that more after. Yeah. But this Sunday is the Manchester one. Best show yeah. in Manchester, hands down. Yeah, make a little romantic situation of it and get a hotel room that night there, and then you could just... We got cats. Can't get hotels. What are you talking about? <laughs> cats? You don't need it. They don't need anything. You got, I got to feed them. Just get them those, like, just put out some food for them. They'll be fine. I miss my cats too much. I can't do that. Oh, my God. You're bad as Claire. <laughs> it's like, they're cats. Just, like, throw some food in a bowl. They'll be fine. Anyway. They don't care. The cat doesn't... The cat give two hoots if you're there or not. Uh, well, my cat. I love my cat. Well, I know All you right. do, but your cat doesn't give two hoots if you're around or not. All right, two hoots. Two let's, hoots in a pizza place. Two, speaking of pizza places, let's go speaking to of pizza Raisin Cane's. Not a pizza place. No. It's a chicken, chicken fingers. Place. Now, let's give us what you watched of note, but also and please include oh, okay. your Raisin Cane review. Uh, okay, so what I watched of note um, hasn't really been anything of yeah, been quiet, huh? major importance. Uh, it's been kind of dead. Did you watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith? I have not yet, no. Oh, no. I love that show. So yeah. Good. So good. Yeah. Uh, really not been watching anything, really, of super interest. Uh, yeah, just kind of just watching random stuff. It was kinda... a busy week for you and me yeah. and a lot of people. Yeah, and just kind of just, and you yeah. know. So how was Raising The weekend games? was busy. Uh, it was good. It was a spur of the moment thing. Uh, usually I have a salad for lunch. Uh, but I opened up my salad and it was wilted because I bought like the pre-made salads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was all like brown and stuff, like looking. Yes, gross. And I was like, you, and no. you don't want to get the Rhea after you eat that. Exactly. That so does like, happen. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not going to take any chances with this. <laughs> so uh, sitting here last year, sitting in the, the bunker here, I was like, oh, I'm starving. I need to get something before the show happens. Yeah. Last night. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to be stuck here until at least 7, 8 o'clock at night. There's no way I'm going to be able to make it that long without having something to eat. So I was like, uh, you know, I'm just going to take a shot. Try the try the canes. If it's too busy, then I'll rethink mm. my plan of attack and go somewhere else There's or something. Plenty of, there's plenty right of options. There's plenty of options. It was either that or Teriyaki Madness. I was like, I'll go to canes first. If canes wasn't an option, if it's too busy or too crazy, then I'll... Hit the Teriyaki Madness. And teriyaki Madness? Not yeah, that bad. It's not terrible. Not but bad. I was like, it's the two new places. So yeah. I was like, either yeah. one, I'll have something to talk about tomorrow on the show. Yeah. Um. So ran over to Kane's. The line wasn't terrible. That's good. It was confusing getting into there. How long was the line? Uh, I basically got almost to the front of the building when I first drive got on the line. Yeah, drive through. Okay. You can't park. You can't like walk. You have to like park in the mall parking lot. Yes. To walk to in. walk in, yeah. So I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. So, well, because the line wasn't that. I was like, if the line's not that long, I'll just hop in line. <laughs> right. So I hopped in line. It took me probably like 20 minutes in line. Wow, that's a long time. Well, not as bad as I've seen some other people say. There but they like, gotta cook it. They do. That is true. Yeah. That's how they make food. <laughs> they have to cook it. They have to cook it. <laughs> it's not just sitting there under not a hot plate. Just sitting there waiting for it. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure they have some pre-made. They're not like right. just like making it to order every time someone right. places an order. Uh, yeah, I just got like the the four finger box with fries and, and bread, uh, coleslaw. Mm. So uh, how and their sauce? Okay, question before we get into it. 
I know the sauces are what people talk about. How yeah. was the chicken? How was it overall? What chicken was all right. I don't mind the breading. Uh, overall, I thought it was too salty for me. Mm. I'm not a big salt guy. Mm. Never have been. No. Like even McDonald's fries sometimes, if they're like, get a heavy salt shaker yeah, 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 person, yeah. then I'm not like, I'm against it. Like yeah. I don't like getting like the dry So you're mouth. saying the fries are salty? Yeah. Was well, there, there was a chicken. There's a little bit of salt on the chicken oh, too. Oh, like the spice? No, just like salt. Okay. Because if you get it, I mean, not for nothing, I'm sure it probably this comes over from the fries. Yes. Because they put it all in that container. Yeah. It's like a to-go container, like you get like a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, it's a styrofoam container. No, but it's like plastic. It's like that oh, okay. recyclable gotcha. styrofoam type yeah. uh, container. So, but yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was the food was meh. Was... The how, sauce was interesting. It's it's definitely the sauce is the, the reason for going. Right. That's what people say. That's yeah. what I hear. Yeah. Now, here's a big question. The coleslaw was too wet for me. You know, I'm not a big coleslaw guy. I'm not a big coleslaw guy either, but if I am doing coleslaw, I know this is a weird thing to discuss, but it, it like I like a dry coleslaw. Like I don't like a really like mayonnaise wet coleslaw. I feel like fast food joints are always wet. Yeah. Sloppy yeah. coleslaw. Yeah. Like KFC is sloppy coleslaw. Yeah. 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 Like I like a drier coleslaw. Like I don't mind if it's like it's gotta have mayonnaise and stuff in it anyway. Mm-hmm. But I don't like it like sitting in a gloppy. Right solution i hear you i agree here is my question what you paid in the food does it add up is it worth the, what you paid for well i, I thought about the, that too because i said it was like for just the thing i got it came to like 13 dollars. it's about average yeah about average. So that's why i figured it's about what you would get nowadays anywhere else pretty much yeah so i mean for, and i got a drink too but i didn't drink the drink it's just because it comes with the meal you mm, can't not mm. get a drink yeah so i got like a water in like a cup so it's yeah. like not worth the right drink so to speak but i was like whatever um but yeah i mean it wouldn't be a place i'd run back out to go to mm. but you should try it yeah i still have to try it myself yeah but like i say it's a clear last night like in my rankings of chicken places it's probably like my like around here, chicken places. Yeah. Probably like my third option. Yeah. Of chicken places. For me, it'd be Popeyes. Well, Popeyes is first for sure. But I've had this discussion multiple times with multiple, and even one of the coworkers here yesterday was having that conversation. Popeyes chicken is really good. Their sides are kind of lackluster. I agree. Yeah. Um. So, like, you can, like, basing off the chicken itself, which is the whole point of the restaurant right Popeye's is on the front and then I'd probably put Chick-fil-a before Raising Cane's interesting chicken wise gotcha uh my thing with Chick-fil-a is that it's the their nuggets are too small they're like popcorn chicken in my opinion they're not like really mm. nuggets like nuggets are bigger yeah I have no opinion I guess I've been there twice in my whole life yeah, I wasn't. I've been there in a long time. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. like I haven't been there a long. Like when they opened originally, I think I went a couple times, and that was about it. Yeah, I know my sister. I know Kylie, and I think Mariah are like addicted to Chick Fil A. They love that place. Yeah, uh, but no, Canes was and the the chicken was all right. Like I said, it was kind of salty. The garlic bread was good. People say the bread's good. It doesn't really make any sense why it's there, but it's good. <laughs> To suck up all the grease? I don't know. I don't know if it's that or if it's just another thing to like dunk into the sauce. Mm. Is the chicken greasy? No, it wasn't super greasy. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. But then again, it's also like that thing of, I don't know if it's the the containers that they're using. Yeah. If that's like they're always containers or if it's just because it's like the beginnings of it, it's easier to just get those to go type containers. Yeah. As opposed to giving out like the individual like I like at like another restaurant where they have like the pockets for like the fries and stuff like that and stuff I like that. I think there. that's how they serve. Yeah. I think so I don't know if that's all the a, photos I've ever seen, it looks like a like a, a like a Chinese restaurant con- container. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I guess it's associated with. Yeah. But yeah, so it's like that kind of thing. So I don't know if that's the the delivery mechanism is what hmm. makes it not as presentation. 
you're saying. The yeah. Person tea, when well, you the look fries at it, weren't crisp either. That's the other thing. Soggy? A little bit, because mm. they're crinkle cuts. I like crinkle. I don't dislike them, but it's just they don't, they don't usually... Crisp. They don't really yeah hold up to... You could have crisp. Yeah, yeah. But if you're in that container, you're building up moisture... Yeah, which makes especially you, like if you're driving it home or to you. You drove it from Enfield all the way home. No, I went here. back here. Oh, okay. but even still, like that wasn't that far. But no, I'm saying like in general, if you're still, driving it totally. a distance, it's not gonna structural integrity is not gonna yeah. last. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely something I think would be more conducive to a dine-in situation. Hmm. Hmm. A little bit more fresh, not as soggy. Yeah, that's good. To yeah, know. you get it like right there. Right there. I have that same that same feeling about uh, Burger King fries. Burger King fries are a dine-in option, mm, not yes. a to-go option. No, yeah, because they don't hold up for travel. I think a lot of these fries don't hold up for travel. But see, that's why Burger King I always go with onion rings. So that's the only bonus. And that's the thing with this place is there's some of them that have different like. Side options. Really? This one doesn't. All we have is the chicken and chicken sandwich. Well, that's like, those are normal, but there's, I think, at other restaurants, the other options of their restaurants might have different sides. Huh. But I could be mistaken about that. Interesting. So, and in, in then in the Mark Warnock review. I give it like a seven. Okay. That's not bad. That's good. It's yeah. a little, that's above average. Yeah. Five being average. Yeah. Seven being a little bit. Yeah. Bad. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, it's right. no Popeyes at a nine, but you know. Yeah, you know what I think has the worst chicken, KFC. Yes, yeah. It's the most disgusting chicken I've, yeah. I think I've ever seen in fast food. Yeah, and I think the quality has gone down. It's gone way down because when they had the restaurant where the Verizon is now. Yeah, that was a good KFC. That was like good. And I do say the one of Popeyes, even the one in Enfield, is the best Popeyes I've been to since like the one I went to in New York like years ago. Yeah, because they're newer, so everything's a little bit better. Well, even just that, I think it's just, they're just, I don't know what it is, but they just put the effort in. Yeah. I've been to some bad Popeyes. I've been to some bad Popeyes. Where it's like three people working, yeah. and it was the most painful experience of yeah. my life. There's one There's one near my house that I'm not a huge fan of. It all depends on who's there. It's like a desperate, Yeah, if you're in desperate need of Popeyes chicken, I'll go there. But yeah, yeah. Since having the one here now, it's like the other place, even though you're... You're close to me. I'll pick it up on the way home and eat it when I get home. Right. Kind of situation. Right, right, right. Because that actually, the structural integrity of that chicken holds. So, All right. Well, I'm glad to hear Raising Cane is decent yeah. enough. Well, I, but it's more of a, it's not a tender. Like the the chicken tenders at Popeye's mm. are like a tender. They're more yeah. of a long strip, like a tenderloin. Well, what's this? This is a this chicken. This is a chicken finger. Yeah. So it's more of like a a. a a long strip of a chicken. The chicken fingers I've seen, though, remind me of Carnival. Like, you go to a fair. Yes. Yeah. They're very it's much like in line kind of, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They made it look more like fingers. Because, you know, chicken's got fingers. Chickens do have fingers. <laughs> they have claws, technically. But well, they, they do have claws. They do. But, you know, we're not eating chicken claws. Yeah. Chicken feet. Chicken feet. People do eat those. That's so gross. Okay. I mean, it's a cultural thing. But um, uh, I would, I would I say know. if you're into that, enjoy it. Right. It seems like it's a, doing a booming business. It so. is. It is. Props to them. It's the newest one. It's the only one in the Northeast, I think. Right. Yes. So that's a big. That's a big happening for Enfield to get the first one. The week it opened, I I was doing my Friday morning errands and I drove by the mall and it was ten o'clock in the morning and the line was out to the old Sears and I was just like, holy! Yeah. Even hell. before that, there was people because initially it was supposed. To Open. We had a snowstorm on the thirteenth. It opened. They had a snowstorm. Yeah, but people still camped out through the snowstorm because they were giving away um, hundred meals for you, a year. For a year, you can get um, uh, raising cane for a year yeah. if you were like a certain person. Yeah, in line. Yeah, so, they give out yeah. to random people yeah. in line. Yeah, just like Chick Fil A did that. Yeah, it, a lady they, that they opened at midnight. I, uh, that I worked with for things here actually was one of the people who got picked. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. And she doesn't even like fast food. Oh, jeez. So she got picked. She Did took she... her son, and her son didn't get picked, but she got picked. Did she give it to her son, at least? Give it to someone I don't know who's going to enjoy that. it? I don't know if you can transfer it. I mean, if I was there... And but you'd so... have to go with him every time to order it. Right, because if, if I won, and I was like, I don't really like this food, I'm just checking it out, 
I'm I, brought my son. I would give it. I would be like, can I give yeah. this to someone else? Because can I don't I want. I don't it to my son who's that, definitely going to be the one that's going to eat. Right. Here. You don't want to waste that. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good price. Yeah. I mean, you know, everything's so expensive nowadays. You yeah. Get yourself a, a year's worth of anything. Yeah. Is pretty good. Yeah. Um. Don't poo poo that. Um. Or a poo poo platter even. <laughs> poo poo platter. Um. Poo poo for two. All right. Well, thank you for the review, Marcus. You're welcome. Um, Anytime. So, um, the next thing coming is Haya Sushi, which is gonna mean the old Denny's. The old Denny's is that gonna how are you gonna handle that? That's gonna be a tough thing for you. Okay, I have two things, two thoughts about this. I'm excited that something new will be coming into town. Sushi places, I said this in our group chat, don't seem to last very long. This one's pretty decent. Is it good? There's one like it's we were talking be about before the show. There's one up by me. It's still uh, open. It's still open. It's the guys that actually uh, have the Joy Bowl restaurant here in town. I like the it's Joy their Bowl. restaurant. Oh. It's their. Uh, it's, they open that. It's like a new chain thing they're starting to do. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, so they opened that up by me behind the uh, wings over Springfield. Mm. They opened it in the old. I think it was a Ginger Blossom Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Uh, we've ordered from there a couple times. Haven't gone in person. Mm-hmm. That's good. Because uh, I'm not a big sushi person, so it really doesn't make any sense for me to go and yeah do all you can eat sushi. Right. But their other stuff is all right. It's so all it's all you can eat. There's certain things I the Josh was saying. There's like two pages of stuff that you can all you can eat. Wow. Of options. Interesting. That place is going to be packed in the yeah. beginning. I'm sure. Yeah. So I'll I was going to say out. before the new one opens here, mm. if you want, maybe you and Allison can come up. Visit us up in our neck of the woods. Yes. And you can go there and you could try it out. Yes. That sounds good. Get your feet wet. Yes. I, okay. I, I like that idea. Yeah. We should do it. I was thinking that's a good idea. So yeah. You can kind of get your... Because I know it's going to be a difficult thing for you to go into that <laughs> establishment Denny's. and not be a Denny's. Oh, I used to sit here when yeah, I was a teenager. That's, I knew that's what it's going to be. I used to... People used to smoke cigarettes. I was thinking about that when I was at Raising Canes because I was watching it. I was in line sitting there and they're across the street. They just started... The trucks just started showing up and are starting to do like the pre-renovation stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to have to go with Brian and like hold his hand and like walk... <gasps> I don't like, know if coach I can him through it. <laughs> coach him through this. <laughs> like we should get the guys together and go and like... Yeah. We should. Get, get our lunch. corner spot if they have the same like area city areas. Yeah, we should all go like like I don't know, record we... a podcast inside then is... Haya Sushi. Oh my god! You know what it's like though. A live food review. Even though they knocked down Chi-Chi's and rebuilt uh, the Outback, Outback, which is which basically close, looks exactly like Chi-Chi's. It was almost the same floor plan. Yeah. So when I went in there for the first time, yeah, on the right side. Was like where the bar was, yeah. and it was kind of laid out the same. And I was like, "This is weird." Yeah. It was weird, yeah, because I felt like I was in the building. Yeah, but th- they closed more. They closed like forty-one Outbacks this week. Yeah, that's a restaurant going down. That's the one that's going down. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, um, it's not really the best. No, um, vegetation. That's true. Even like there by us, there's a uh, was an Olive Garden that closed. That's amazing. When you're not there, their family. So, Olive Gardens are always uh, busy. I know. How I think it was just the owner issue okay um but they turned it into a uh, korean hot pot all you can eat place oh uh so the first time we went there it was even strange i don't like we've been there a couple times but it's mm-hmm. like our neighborhood olive garden yeah 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 yeah. and when you need to be in family, family? like your family you would go there um but no so for a couple the first time we went there it was very weird it was like oh i mean that's that's where that was in the yeah whole olive garden and that's where that was at that we're gonna go into the sushi place and i'd be like and that's where that that drunk guy peed in that. <laughs> yeah. And that's where that's where Denny's Poops dot com started. Yeah, that's where I was when I was drunk. I mean, the here. one good thing about it is the bathroom will always work, as opposed to the previous regime. Right. Yeah. Where it never worked, or one worked, and you had to share <laughs> and take turns. <laughs> take turns and wait in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. At two o'clock in the morning. Morning. Yeah, that's true. Well, that'd be fun. Okay, I I like that idea, Mark. Or waking people up from sleeping in the booths to take them home. <laughs> oh, Denny, <laughs> we miss you. Oh, uh, in, in our youth, our uh, youth, are randomly picking up people's girlfriends there because they've been <laughs> camped out there for six hours and they needed to ride home. Uh, all right, let's oh, move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For me, Marcus, I didn't watch anything. I've had a busy week. The one thing 
that I would I, I was excited about um, is being part of ETV this past Wednesday. We had yes. uh, a band Private EQTV Language on even. EQTV. Um, the reason I bring this up is um, Ryan, the lead singer, was yeah he he was behind no the idea. camera of Equilibrium TV. Not that I would know because I wasn't at that show. So it was a Josh Easton. A event. Josh Easton production. Um, we did the Jeff Buckley tribute. Hey, here you goes. Uh, tribute, um, which is on our YouTube channel, and Ryan did the. He was the other camera guy. Yeah. Um. So it was like crazy because he goes, "I know you. You know, I know you." Yeah, too, Josh Easton. Like, I was he, like, "What?" When he showed up before you got here, he was like, "I've really been wanting to get in the show for years." I'm like, "Okay." Well, Weird. yeah, he said, "Why would you want to be on the show?" He said, "When it came back, he goes." He's oh. like, "I was super excited when you guys brought the show back." Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "Watch the show." He was like, "No, I was a crew guy on the show." I was like, "I, what?" Yeah, that's cool. I was like, "It must have been a show I wasn't at," and so he was. Then he told me, "I was like, oh yeah, that's crazy." Well, this the so the Jeff Buckley Buckley tribute show, which was in Northampton. Long story short, it was a it was put together. By our friend Ryan Tool, Brian yeah. Tool, he put it together. It, tons of local artists, all tribute to Jeff Buckley and Josh Eason. They had talked to him about getting it filmed. And now originally, it had nothing to do with ETV. Yeah. So what happened was Josh reached out to me and said, "Hey, I got someone. Can you do camera? Yeah, for this. They want. Yeah. I want. We want to film it. Yeah. And I said, "Well, if I'm going to do camera, can I? Can we use it? And if you remember, I did edit the shows here. You did. Um, so that's how that came about. And I actually, yeah. I think that was, I think that was the only show. Um, me and Ryan were both paid by Josh. Wow. I think we made 60 bucks. Wow. Because Josh. Got paid for doing it. He got paid from doing it from. That's, uh, where, we, that's where we started ourselves wrong. From Brian. Show. Yeah. It's not getting paid to do those shows. He got yeah, Brian paid because he, he, he wanted we someone so to 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 uh, yeah. have this recorded because yeah. it was a big event. Um, and Josh, I remember both of us getting paid. Yeah. So it was an interesting show. Well, it I was that was like one of the only like one of the few shows that I wasn't involved in. Like, but there was a couple of shows person. I wasn't involved with. No, yeah, but I'm just saying. Yeah. But I think was, like I was thinking about it. I think it was that one, the Ha Ha Heat show. I didn't do Ha Ha Heat. We saw or, them. We, or Reverend Horton Heat. Reverend Horton Heat. N- neither of us were part of that. Yeah. See, we actually ETV near the, a lot near the of, end. We started the. We had we had people we used to crop it out to people. People were doing it. Um, whatever Andy Heavysides. Yeah. He recorded a band at the Webster. Yeah. Which, was that the McMahon's or whatever? No, that was from Long Meadow. That was the, the other one. Too. He filmed his buddy's band Webster. They did all. He even did the editing. Then the show. Was that Tidwell's? Tid, no, Ted Wills, I did that oh. with uh, Sam. Those are the ones with the 11s that you guys yes. did. That's right. Um, there was a chain there at the time when like, the 11s was the place and you were filming shows there all the time. Yeah, I mean, it just, like, it all depends. But um, Eason and Allison, Ornstein, and those guys yeah. did Reverend Hort and Heat. Yeah. Yeah. And then I wasn't involved, I was involved in it, but just was a camera guy for it and didn't really do anything because Josh took the lead on it. it. was the Horse the Band one. That was a Josh Eason production. Well, we were all there for that. Yeah, no, but I didn't like he like spearheaded it all because I had no idea who they were or anything about them. Well, we had Ryan Mead did the interview. Yeah, and unfortunately, the lead singer was sick, so yeah. he sang behind the curtain the whole time, and yeah. they put a little stuffed animal on the on the thing. Yeah, we did. There was a bunch of bands we did that day. Yeah, uh, Horse the Band was the biggest. I mean, I didn't know them either, other than yeah. Josh got us the yeah. gig. You're right. Wasn't um, Simon Sinister opening? Is that what that was? No, Simon Sinister. Or was that Morning Wood? That's we we watched that together. Yeah, we what didn't was that film Simon that. Sinister was there yes. playing before though. Simon Sinister opened up for Morning Wood because we went with there Susie was Underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I yeah. saw Sunday with the kids. I I told her about it. I told her about the show when I saw her at the train show. Susie came with the kids. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I haven't seen her forever. Well, um, man, there's a reason behind that. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we can. Go, people yeah. are like, "What are you guys talking about?" Yeah. Anyway, private language it happens when you you know go down the road. I would home. go, ch- you know, look them up. They're on all the streaming platforms. Fantastic band. Yeah, they're very cool. They're very. It's a very. It was uh, a great show. 
Claire was asking like what their sound was, and I was like, it's a very smooth. That's all I can say. It's a very smooth sound. Yeah, it's very yeah, it's very well put together. You know, I don't say this very often, but I'm still listening to their uh, EP Teeth. I'm still I I love it. Wow, I love it. Wow, it's real good. That's cool. And I, honestly, uh, all these bands that I you're about to transition into a new band, so I'll I get know too attached. But all these bands <laughs> so re- far, it's two for two. You guys are working on the new one. Two for two, yeah, Illuminous. Illuminous. Um, I love their music as well. Yeah. So we're we're so you're moving on. back into the you're getting back into the groove. Back into the local scene. Yeah. As it is. Which I which is weird because I was like thinking that the other day because when I was looking at when I went to the show uh, at the fifty two Sumner the four one three show that was like the first local show I'd been to mm. eons I can't remember the last right. time it was too before that um, I, I couldn't tell you yeah. So it was just very strange, and I was like, oh, man, I used to enjoy going to these and doing the show, and we used to film the bands, and it was the reason why well, we, before, it was an excuse to go to the shows, basically. And before ETV, we used to play them on the radio. Yeah, yeah. CO2 was a big proponent. Yeah. Well, like, GB&E, I'd, CO2. Because we did that uh, Battle of the Bands at T. Shenanigans was the impetus of all that stuff. Mm-hmm, but, um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so it's just kind of crazy, and it's like thinking to myself now, and like now we're like booking the show and getting the bands and finding out all these bands and seeing how many bands are out there that I never even knew existed. Yeah, it's crazy. I it's know. like there's so much music out there that. Oh yeah, that's great. You know, people should be listening to, so you should check it out. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, but Equilibrium TV, it's on Facebook, on the YouTube, it's on YouTube. The Private Language Show will be dropping on local television. Uh, next couple weeks, and uh, yeah, it's on the shows are on the wax every Thursday at 10 p.m. Nice. Last week was Egg. I want to say this week. Don't hold me to it because I can't remember off the top of my head because I have so many schedules for who's playing where and when. Uh, I think it's Sparkle and Fade this nice. week. That on was the wax. a good band too. They were yeah, great. they're really good. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorites. I'd say them. Audio Jane. Every band we had last year was really good. Yeah. The missing gym was eh, and you know, unlucky me was all right too. But you know, but GB and E really was pulled the it, best. They pulled it together. Yeah, and the fact that like when I was talking, going back to the private language show, I was telling Ryan like he's like, oh, who, you know, it was crazy. I saw the unlucky me show because they played with unlucky me, and it was one of his. I well, don't know, yeah, it was yeah, his band was or an old band. Oh uh, yeah, so I was like, yeah, and then I told him about the GB and E thing. He's like, what? You guys got GB and E together? Well, I, I was re- like, yeah, the gb I, I relabel that so people know. because Well, it's it was like, at the time we were trying to keep it a secret because we didn't want people to be a surprise. Baby. Secrets so, out. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it was a you know news embargo, as they say. <laughs> it's a news embargo. Let the, let the secret out of the bag until after it's, you right, know. Right. So, but yeah. It's so, been a blast, Mark. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a blast. Um, I look forward to it. Um, yeah. This month we have uh, soldiers coming in. Yeah. I'm not no, sure if I'm saying that correctly, but... That's how I've. Well, I'll be I've reaching out. out to them and listening to their tunes. So well, because their thing is spelled weird. It's S O L G Y R E S. I don't know if it's supposed to be soldiers, like Folgers Coffee, or Soldiers. So. I'll find out. Yeah. I'll talk to them. Soul Gyros. It could be that. Too. <laughs> yes. Gyros. Soul Gyros. It's the name of a new restaurant. Soul Gyros. Soul Gyros. Um, let's move on real, let's move on to last week. We didn't get to talk about the X-Men 97 trailer. Yes. Now for me, I was just kind of, I, we talked about shows we were looking forward to and I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. Like, it's just like, well, for but, me, that show is just a theme song, but I saw the trailer. The theme song is the, the thing for that show. Yeah. But I saw the trailer and I was like, okay, I'll watch this. I'll yeah. watch it. I'll watch it. They got all the old, the old original voices. Yeah. The animation's the same. Some of them, some of them passed away, so some of them aren't. But you can hear but... the oldness in their voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I like that continuation of because Professor X had died in the final episode. Yeah. Um, that now looks like Magneto is taking over. Yes. I am in. I am in. Yeah. I will. I will definitely check this out. Yeah. So. I hope we can talk about it on the show. I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for it. It takes a little bit more. It's like, if I didn't see that trailer, I was still hemming and hawing. 
but that trailer didn't. The theme song did it for me, too. Yeah, the theme song is the oh, whole thing. It's a great theme song. It's really the theme song. Is the oh, whole I thing. just heard the door. I heard the door as well. Josh, so, you're going to go leave on the white shot and go get the door. Yeah, we'll keep talking. Uh, but yeah, so... Yeah, so that's uh, X Men ninety seven. Yeah. It's so, coming. are you excited? Did it do anything for you other than the theme song? Oh, uh, like I, I wasn't a huge fan of the original. I wasn't. I think I was too old at that point. I didn't really get into the original. I watched. Like when I wasn't I a big X Men guy, anyways. I was really into X Men comics. Yeah, I had a lot of X Men adventure a comics. I had a lot like, of. It was kind of just going on, and I knew it was like it was a very popular show. Was between that and Spider Man, like the Spider Man show was out too. That was kind of, yeah. I mean, I was a huge Batman animated series guy. Yeah, me too. That's what I was into. Um, but that even came that out Superman early. animated series was good. Yeah, it was I good. Like that that the look of it, the noir look to it. Right. I well, that's what that. the Batman had too. Yeah. Um, but no. I really, you know, I I think we're in the clear. Yeah, it's just okay. someone coming to edit, I think. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Batman. But, yeah, X-Men, you're going to check it out? I'll check it out, yeah. All right. Yeah, for right. sure. We'll, we'll talk I about will have the to, first like, episode. watch or see if there's some kind of online, like, catch-up thing. I'm sure there will be. I'm sure a I know lot it definitely the... got deep. Like, if I remember correctly, when I did get into it, towards the end, they got into, like, the House of M stuff and all that kind of, like, deep X-Men lore stuff. Yes. Which I have no idea about whatsoever. And I know, like, there was a big thing where at the last season of the show, a lot of the people that worked on the original seasons left. Mm. There's, like, a issue with creative. So the last season kind of got weird. Yeah, I'm And kind of went off the rails a little bit. Unaware. And they killed Professor X at the end. Well, he dies at the end. Yeah. And then there's that weird scene where they're all like staring off into space, and that's how this this show ends. And it never came back. Yeah, it never came back. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's kind of like I don't know how they're gonna like approach that. Well, I suppose it picks up right where this show yes, left off. Yes, it's gonna be good. So I I bet you anywhere IGN and uh, websites alike are all gonna be making like. Like one of those yeah, five like minutes. Catch you up. Catch you up. I mean, I'll definitely watch that. Or too. put on the front of the series. That's the thing you would do. That's the best thing to you do. You know, you think they would, but. Or like who knows? episode zero or something. Like, they, how do we get to here? They could, Disney could. That would be very smart. They do have the whole series on this, the Disney lot, Plus, too. So but watch I'm, not gonna watch. I'm not going to have time to watch yeah. all that. I mean, I know I've tried watching it before. Yeah. And it's kind of tough because it's. it's Product of its time. Product of its time. I feel like it's going to be a little yes. bit more juicier this time around. A little bit yes. more Except oomph in there. On certain characters' drawings. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, people it's need a to thing get. That's been talked about. People... I'm not bringing it up. I didn't. It didn't Here, really affect PSA, me. At all. I'm going to look right at this camera. Didn't PSA. Affect me at all? PSA. I'm going to say this. Just because you can't do something crude to a cartoon or you want to sexualize a cartoon is very weird. And it's it's very disturbing. So just enjoy the show. Who cares? I mean, I'm sure there's... I you mean, should not worry not about an animated butt. Someone's to, animated butt. To a generation behind us or younger than us, uh, Rogue to them is as... Jessica Rabbit was to our generation, I'm thinking. I understand. But Rogue is still a good looking character. Jessica Rabbit yeah. still but we don't need to sexualize cartoons. No. It's weird. We don't. It's weird. No. You're an adult. Yeah. To the people who for some yeah. strange reason are mad. But I mean there is a whole like genre of the cartoons. The people who that get up, I know, I know, but the people who so get it's up, that, it's, not to it's, have it's, that it's like, it's right time. up there with, uh, Carl Tuckerson getting mad about the green M&M, or Tucker Carlson, whatever his name is, I don't care. And Carl Tuckerson, Carl Tucker, <laughs> Tucker, Tucker, Tuckerson. Um, it's like him getting mad at the <laughs> green <laughs> M&M for not being sexy anymore. Like it's bizarre. Ah, uh, whatever. It's bizarre. That's like you're giving him way more time than he needs existence. Well, that did happen. It yeah, was no, a but thing. you're giving him way more like airtime than his his whole life expectancy warrants. That's why I called him Carl Tuckerson. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, I just thought it was strange when it was shared in our group chat. I was yes. Like, why is this happening? I know. I Who's think they were just joking. I think they were just joking around. Rogues took us. I wasn't. And to be honest. Her the way she was drawn was not what drew like 
interested me in Rogue's character when it came out on the cartoon. Right. I did watch it. Yeah. It was the way that the, the characters was acted by the voice actor. Well, like yeah. the accent and the voice made yeah. it more of a selling point for me than right. the way she was drawn. Right. As Jessica Rabbit would say, I'm not bad. I was just drawn this way. Exactly. You know. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So anyway. I think it was I, a southern accent. Yes. A Louisiana drawl yes, that she has yes. that kind of you know what? perked interest. You know, I don't want to, if people, you know, if you want to lust over cartoons and you're a middle-aged man i guess go for it i guess i don't know i'm sure they i mean they do make body pillows like that so i mean i'm sure there's a, a <laughs> we're slew going of off the rails again i'm sure there's a slew of them um, living in the world somewhere right so let's move on to the main topic the main I, topic for today is the is wwe Ma- why is Madame Webb a thing? Oh. elimination chamber elimination chamber i had a absolutely blast watching this and I had a great time, and mm. I had a great time talking about it with Matt Ryan on Sunday. Yeah, his whole family got up to watch it with him. I heard, He was yes. very excited about it. I got up at 5.30, but that's the time I normally wake up. It was just the last leg of it. We're just ending, yeah. Yeah, so I waited, and I watched it around 2 in the afternoon. Um, we watched it, it last night, or no, Sunday night. I watched it Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I absolutely loved it. I had a great time. I think what we should do is before WrestleMania, we should make predictions. Uh, okay. Um, I, I think that would be fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we can start our own little like fantasy wrestling league. That'd be kind of cool. I'd be up for that. There's a lot of them online. A lot of people do that. It's yeah, not. Yeah. That, it's not a new concept. I'll tell you that much. Well, okay, okay. But we can do I'm it. I'm saying we can still do it. We can do have it. Have like a thing and. Whoever loses has to like do something stupid. You have to dress up as Rogue. <laughs> yes, in the old Rogue costume. In the old Rogue costume. The old Rogue costume, not the new one. The old Rogue. You have costume. to do the whole podcast dressed up as Rogue. I don't know if anyone wants to see that. Oh my god, would that be great? No. Would that be great? I think maybe if you had to do the whole podcast dressed up as Doink the Clown. Now that's shame. an easy one to get. The clown outfit. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean. I don't think either of us want to dress up as a clown. I think we got to find something that we'd not want to. But that's the whole point. With. If you lose, you I have know. to do something you don't want to do. Yeah, you don't want to do something you want to do. See, it's What's for me point? on my end of it though. I feel bad though because I feel like I have more into intuition, like more knowledge on this than you do. And I would just like if I just let make you lose like four times in a row, I'm gonna feel bad. How about this? If I just like keep embarrassing you constantly. That's gonna make me feel terrible. Oh, it would make you feel so bad. I could feel. I would not want to do that to you as my best friend. I well, would like, like to give you a chance to actually win at something. You know, I'm, I obviously I'm not going to watch um, all the Monday and Friday night events. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're but not going to get all the... But I did watch, but I am watching the after shows to get the highlights of oh, what there you happened. Go. Yeah. Which I did this morning of yeah. what happened last night. Yeah. And now I am kind of interested in watching Monday Night Raw yeah. because... Um, uh, I'll say her name. Uh, uh, Jax. Nia Jax. Is, Nia Jax is going to be up against um, uh, Becky. Becky Lynch. Yes. And I kind of want to see that match. Yeah. So I might watch. Yeah. I have a meeting, but I might wait till I get home. You can re- watch it after. I'm fact. Peacock. You got the watch. Hulu. Yeah. So. Um, it airs the next day on Hulu. What's well, on Peacock? I know, but that too. Yeah. Um, so, real quickly, I'll go through the map. My, my favorite match. Mm-hmm. Was the Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax? That was really the only good match on the show. Now, as someone who's new, and Rhea Ripley being the one tag of the match um, was probably the worst match on the show. Right. Yeah. Uh, we'll go in order. We'll go this order. I have mm-hmm. so her being one of the one of the wrestlers that I was exposed to when getting into wrestling. Yes, I love her character. She's um, a very good character. Right. I I I like her a lot. So this match was great. Because I equated it, we were talking yesterday. It was very, or on Sunday, it was very much like watching Hulk Hogan versus uh, Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. Yes, it's very much that's the motif they're going for yeah. with that. And that's what brought me back. Yeah. And I had the most fun with this match um, because even though there was no way, no way. Uh, Ripley was going to lose in her home yeah. place. I mean, they've done that before. Where they've they have. Had people do that. But this was too big. And I mean, Indy Hartwell lost. 
But I'm her, saying she lives. She's from Australia. I was like on the edge of my seat a little bit because because Jax was like throwing her around like a yeah. rag doll for a little bit there, yeah. and there were some really good moves. It was yeah. a, that was a great match, and it, I um at the end her celebrating with her family there was fantastic. Um, see that was see, going that was off a lot of what fun. you were saying about the that's my only downside to this whole P- PLE was the fact that it was very a formulaic PLE. It was very much a we knew where things were going to end up at the end. of I it, understand PLE. that, but did, as long as you have fun like, watching it, who cares? Yeah, I mean the 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 I had the, fun. Wrestling was fun, but like you were saying, not watching the Mondays and Fridays might help with that kind of viewership of yeah. these PLEs. Right. If you watch the Mondays and Fridays, you know going into it, there's a very good chance mm. Becky was going to win the women's elimination chamber match. I, I didn't know. There was a very good chance Drew was going to win the men's elimination chamber match. Yes. You do have more. You're they, pr- like, privy you to more the information. Story lines, you right. know the storylines. You yeah. know what's going on. You kind of see how they're mapping things out in so, how they're going to tell the stories. What I'm going to do... When I, because I'm not going to be able to watch all that stuff, I will watch the after show. Like yeah. I watched the after show this morning. I got everything I needed to know yeah, that yeah. happened on Monday, yeah. and I know what's coming up. Yeah. So I'll just kind of stay informed that way because yeah. I kind of there's too much. And you got Liv bopping around in there and the women's side of things. Yes. She's yes. Not happy. Um. The only reason why that's happening, and I'll tell you this little inside baseball. Well, stuff. well do you want to go into the well, women's the elimination? Thing, well, the women's match. I'll tell you about what, what are we talking about? The chamber match or the, well from last night, the whole reason why the Becky Naya thing's happening. Oh yes. Uh Becky Rhea Kim comes out, does her thing. Yeah. Becky comes out, chirps back, uh, Rhea leaves, Naya comes yes. in, takes out Becky. Yes, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it in the highlights and this then morning. Who would have thunk they'd schedule Naya to have a match and not Becky? Right. So Naya's in a match with Liv Morgan for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Because of all the six people that were in the ring when she got when she beat up all the women, the only one that decided that they wanted to go after Nia Jax was the smallest, tiniest blonde one. Yeah. Um, and the reason why that's all happening on her side is there's a big internet groundswell of trying to put Liv into this spot like the groundswell was for Cody on yes. the men's side. Yeah, she's on the r- although Liv road didn't of revenge. Win, right even though now? Liv didn't win anything. That I'm not warranted a big fan her. of hers right now. I don't really her like character her. character is just weird. Like it's not, There's no real like it's, basis for why she's angry. She, she her says, only basis is that she got beat up by Rhea. Right. She's on a road to revenge. But That's you only have says. revenge on one person. And you're so far down the pecking order where you're not going to have a reason to come after that person. But that's why it makes a good story because she's trying to work her way up to the top. Yeah, but it's not going to be, there's not enough time for that story to work. I I I think I I think it's going to be a longer story. It's going to that's, go some, past, that's something, but it needs yes. to be like. But if that's the case, and Rhea loses the belt at Mania, so to speak, mm-hmm. then where does that story go? Like, how is her going after Rhea still mean anything if Rhea is just Rhea without the belt? The only reason that story works is if Rhea still has the belt, right? And the only thing that I'm thinking mm. of that they could do which I think they're kind of setting up in the Gunther situation, is if they do, like they used to have, the money in the bank would happen at WrestleMania. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they'd have the thing where you win the case and the then case. have it yep. until the next WrestleMania. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't, I think they're going to still, I think they're heading in that direction of doing that, but with the women's, Rhea's belt, and I think with Gunther's belt, where they're setting up these multiple competitors like con- yeah. like contenders yeah that instead of having just the one-on-one match they're gonna try to jam in six women and six wrestlers oh my god because then that way you get more people in on the payday of wrestlemania yeah and you could branch out more stories that way as opposed to just putting on one-on-one matches yeah because i think that's a very triple h nxt era type of storytelling yeah Instead of just using one and one match, you get two, two and we two, can do three and three, four or five people. That's how the elimination chamber came about back in the day. Was how can we get multiple stories going in one location? Well, for the WrestleMania, it's going to be um, uh, Becky Lynch versus uh, Rhea Ripley. Right now, there's right. still forty days, but they're up. They're build. 
Yeah, but they could change it. They're always that's a big. If you notice on any of the graphics, here's the thing you need to learn as a as a newbie to this this situation. If you see any of their graphics that they have mm -hmm. for any of the sh matches, mm -hmm. even Cody versus Roman, mm. Drew yeah. versus Seth, anything that's announced on the bottom, there's always an asterisk with a card subject to change. And well, they put that on there in case someone gets hurt. Yes. Someone gets sick. Or they change up the story. Something happens and they decide that this isn't going to work. We're going to pull the plug on this and go a different direction. Well, that's good to know because so, I was thinking about, uh, I heard how The Rock is going to be part of the Friday night show for the next three weeks. Yes. And the next three weeks shows have all sold out just about. Yeah. So something big is going to happen. I feel by week three, come on. Well, I think by week, by the end of the month, I think the last, I would say probably the Friday SmackDown before WrestleMania weekend, they'll do the Rocky versus Cody match. Do you think? That's the way to do it. Before or WrestleMania? Match, or the tag match. Because isn't that billed for WrestleMania? No. It's rumored well, to be happening at WrestleMania. Because it, it's supposed to be... But I think that's a thing you do as you're building. Do we have one more big event before WrestleMania? No. They said SmackDown. No, SmackDown's just the It's main, a regular Friday show. It's a Friday show. show. Okay. There's no more PLDs before WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a big one. There won't be another PLE besides WrestleMania till May. SummerSlam? No, May. You have Payback, I think it's what's called. Um, that's usually the one that's the way I write after. Well... That's why I'm interested to see uh, Nia Jax up against uh, uh, Becky Lynch. Yes. Because what, I mean, could something happen there? Well, I think that's what they're going to, they might either do the injury angle thing where Becky gets beat up by Nia, and there's a thing of, is she going to be able to make it to Mania? Because are they going to do another rematch between Nia? No, and, I don't think Because we so. already got that. No. I, I don't want to see The only thing again. that could happen is they're going to like gradually start like adding people to the match. Like, we'll make it a three-way, and then Liv will somehow get involved, and then it'll break down where that right. is now. Yeah. Now, isn't Ripley part of... Is Judgment Day. Judgment Day? Yes. Because that's the whole thing. And they got yeah. the bloodlines, the whole thing. Yes. They're trying to rip apart the bloodline. Yes. That's that's, the that's big, the, that's, Cody's big mission there. That's very interesting. He's a blood hunter. Yes. It's very <laughs> He's fun. your character in D&D. Yeah. He's a blood hunter. He's a blood hunter. That's very fun. He's basically the same kind of character, too, because he's not very good at it. I, hey. At D&D, I've been pretty good. I've been rolling pretty good. He shakes hands with, like, demons who take their souls. Yes. Well, that yeah. wasn't good. Yeah. Um, I would say the um, the Waller show was really entertaining. Waller effect. Yeah. Um, it's entertaining, but also annoying at the same time. Why? Because the way they... Those are fun. The way they portrayed that segment led you... Led, led me to think, okay, are they going to... Are they setting up... Waller to turn and become a good guy. Well, didn't Waller just, he kind of just stood there? Didn't he just Austin wrestle on Monday? Didn't he just get his beat? Didn't he lose against um what's his name last night? He beat, he lost to Cody last night. Yeah, but so Cody's kind of like showing... but no, so that's like and then last night all of a sudden he's mad at Cody and Seth rooting his show. Yes, but last night you didn't do anything. You just stood there and watched <laughs> Austin Theory get. <laughs> taken out <laughs> yes yeah so if you weren't really mad about it last night why are you all of a sudden mad about it today well i mean what so it's kind of like a weird that was like the weird thing right that's that weird storytelling that like you can't like there's no consistency in your storytelling that's the things that annoy me about the new regime is they do that sometimes will this be like oh don't remember that what happened last night we're mm. just going to change the story to let me austin Th austin theory is the guy that got beat up, why wouldn't he not be the one that's mad and right. want to have a match with Cody? Because was he the one going talking about the rock and he got Yeah. He got yeah. like he's uh, the one that wears an all day shirt. And yeah, all yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's like why wouldn't you be that guy that then wants to fight Cody? That should be the, the match that should have happened last night. Right. Should have been Austin Theory versus Cody. I agree. And Grayson Waller should have just been there. Right. And been annoyed at even more annoyed with Austin. He was upset though. But no, I mean, but like he should have been on the outside, not in the match. Not in the match. And he should have been annoyed with Austin Theory for not being able to still beat Cody and then gradually start that erosion of the two of them mm. to then like having them go against each other. That would have been good. That would be good. So that's like, that's I would have done as gotcha. a writer. I think it's just they coming off of what you, you saw story wise in Elimination Chamber, where again, like I said, Waller just stood there. 
lean against the ropes. Yes. And then like sat in the chair and looked at Austin like he was <laughs> aggravated with him. <laughs> so then all of a sudden t- the last night being like, you ruined my show. I must fight you. Yep. That, that doesn't make sense. But There's also no storytelling there. I know that show was kind yeah, of. If you were going to set up the match it, last I night. like, yeah. Grayson should have done something during that that would have made him mad with Cody. Mm-hmm. The way you told that story made you look like he was mad at Austin. Mm. I feel like sometimes these stories, like even when I got into this last year, the whole thing with Seth's back was BS to me because I never felt it. They can't. Well, everybody yeah. was talking about they his back. They dragged it out too much. They dragged it on, and everybody's talking about and his they back. They kept having Shinsuke to, like beat him up. Yes, and it's like, and he well, would. Then why my would he favorite, just, my favorite. This why is when when, just, his back's bad. Why would you just kick him in the back? Yes, and then just pin him and win. Okay, when he he was fighting Seth Rollins last year. This is when I, I I think I realized this is the moment I was like, okay, I'm back in. When they're wrestling and he's he's got him pinned against the ropes and they got a close up on is it what's his what's his, Shinsuke. Shinsuke. They had his face and he starts rubbing his back and he's like he's just like <laughs> and I'm like what is going on? And he's like, oh, oh, like that. He's like, I can feel the pain. Yes, yes. I can feel your pain. And here was the disconnect for me. I'm coming into this going, okay, the, the the announcers are talking about his back. They did a whole preload package about his back and his family. Yeah. But not once during that match was he wincing and talking. Like, he wasn't doing yeah. all my – he was just, like, wrestling yeah. pretty fine. Yeah. So I thought that was very comical. And yeah. he's like, oh, the back, I feel It's like it makes you feel like like – there's plenty of people out there in the but world it was great. that I know it. what back pain is. Exactly. I experienced back yes, pain. Yes, and he did not. And it, it, he, what he's doing is not something anyone that has back no. pain can do. No, no. I had back problems when I used to shovel heavy snow. And yeah, I'd be on my back for like a whole day. Yeah, when you're old. I couldn't get up. And after you hit 40, everyone has back issues. Right. But it's just like. They play that off way yeah, too long. It's just kind of like. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff like that. Where yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But you have fun with it. You know it's there stupid. There needs to be someone in the room that's like, hey, guys. Yeah, maybe we should make this. We should kill this reality a little bit, <laughs> and not just totally go off into superhero territory. Yes, yes, yes. Where he's not Superman, and he's just magically able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, just because so, we said so. Right now, I kind of like Seth Rollins, freaking Rollins. Now, I like his character now with Cody Rhodes. I kind of like that. Well, they've had to like team up, pivot with him because of his knee situation. Yeah. Whereas if he was not hurt, he would be wrestling and doing things. So now you're just having him go out there and talk continually. Yeah, because he's he's and waiting to get the doctor's approval. Unfortunately, sometimes his promo skills <laughs> kind of fall off. Yeah, if he goes too long. Yeah, and it gets kind of like, all right, dude, you just kind of need to just pass the baton over to somebody else, please, because you're uh, kind of just rambling. You lost your train of thought, mm. and now we're out in the nowhere, no man's land. Um. So. We'll go on As to... As opposed to Drew, who can talk for days. Right. Yes. Yes, he can. Um, we'll go on to the women's tag team, which is the... Uh, Kobe... Kabuki Warriors. Kabuki Warriors. Asuka and Kairi Zane. I like them. They're fun. Um, they were Damage up, control. They were up against... Damage control. Candice... Who, who, and, Candice, Candice LeRae. And... Who was the wife of Johnny Gargano, actually. Okay. And... And Indy Hartwell. Indy Hartwell. Now... In WrestleMania, the Kabuchi Warriors are up against um, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Yes, because they were on Raw last night. They are. They're, um, raw, they're raw superstars. Yes. Funny. This is. Hear me out on or is, this. Or as they call on the internet, Shayna Baszler and R- Ronda Light. Ronda Light. <laughs> Hear me <laughs> out Zoe on Stark. this. Zoe Stark. The way Tony Stark. <laughs> Zoe Stark. The, the way they talk. They feel like they're ripped out of Letterkenny. Yes. So I watched yeah, yeah. their interview. Yeah. And the way they yeah. talk, there is a language they have that yeah. is very, very peculiar. It's the it's, Northwest. It's very interesting, very comical. I found it very Northwest. comical. I want to say Northwestern. But I was like, they the, they kind of talked like the jocks in Letterkenny yes. a little bit. They reminded yeah, yeah, me yeah. a lot of them. Yeah. Um, anyway. They have that MMA presentation. Yeah, these women are like yeah. built. Like, they could kick your butt. They're thick. Like yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. that that sh- if this if that match still goes on for a WrestleMania, that's gonna be a tough one to predict. It'll be like a. I was assuming that would be a 
a Saturday early match. Because these two girls, those you two remember, women, it's two are days. B- so yeah, they have a lot to fill. They're they got big. a lot of stuff they got to put in there. They could probably crush the the Kabuki Warriors, but at the same time, yeah. Kabuki Warriors are really like Kabuki Warriors. Kabuki, they're very not Kombucha Warriors. Kombucha, <laughs> the Kombucha Warriors. <laughs> did I say oh, that? I did not Kombucha. say. You said something. <laughs> did not say Kabuki Warriors. I did not say Kombucha. You said Kabuki Warriors. Anyway. <laughs> now you gotta let me say it wrong. Don't Kabuki. get me down there. Kabuki. Kabuki warriors. They are very small and they kick. <laughs> yes, they're very agile. Agile is the word I'm looking for. Yes. God, Mark. Now I'm thinking yeah. Kabuki. Well, there's different styles too. Yeah. Because you have like the jujitsu. Yes. Style of uh, Stark and Baszler to the Japanese strong style of Asuka and Kairi Zane. Right. And then you got EO and Bailey. That's a match that'll be happening at WrestleMania, more than likely. More than likely. I mean, that's pretty much no one's even talking about it, but it is happening. Um, she did win the the Royal Rumble after all. Yes, she you did. Know, she's not in any of the posters or any of the promotional stuff whatsoever. Yeah. EO or Bailey. It's like, um, hey guys, what's going on there? Let's put Bianca on this stuff for some reason. Um. So something could happen between now and then. Maybe. Yeah, I don't think so. Um. So we have. The men for the um, the men's tag team, which um, I wasn't really into either of these guys, this group. Um, Judgment Day. It's going to be Judgment Day. I think it's going to be Judgment Day and Awesome Truth. Which is Finn and no, Damien. That's the Judgment Day side, yes. And then Peter, uh, Pete and Taylor. That was Pete Tyler. and Tyler Bate. Yeah. But I don't think that's that's not going to happen at WrestleMania. That's just no, a, no, no. Just a filler to get to Miz and our truth. The, the Miz. So that's the story that's happening. Uh, wrong. All right, I, I, I'm unaware about that. <clears throat> that should be interesting. Because our truth was acting like he was in the Judgment Day as a comedy character. Need to walk around. Yes, I remember the Miz. Day. I remember the Miz. Well, no, our truth. I'm saying. Oh, our. We go around, okay. acting like he was in. Because I think that's the. I the thing is, and I've said this to Claire when we watched the show, and Matt Ryan too. I've said this. You can't, Damien can't cash in until they lose their tag team belts. Because the last thing you want is a double champion. Right. Because it's, the, for one thing, it's very difficult to book a double champion. Because if you pin them as t- a tag team wrestler, mm-hmm. or if they lose the belts of the tag team wrestler, they kind of lose their clout as a singles champion. Right. In my opinion, and I also think like if you're doing that, then they're having two stories going at once, because they're f- especially as a tag team guy. Yeah, they're having to defend the tag team titles, and also on the other side of it, be involved in a singles storyline, and you have it's a lot of jumbling. It's a lot. I get yeah. it. I get it. Uh, we and have... with him having the case now as well, so it's like you have to. That's already enough. You got to pace it stuff out. You, you got to. It's like there's been no like real threat to him like cashing in. Right. To me at least. I haven't really seen anything where it's been like, oh my gosh, he's gonna cash in now. Um now we have the two elimination chamber matches to talk about. Now the men's we'll talk about the men's. Yes. Which um say his last name for me, Drew McIntyre. McIntyre. It's Not spelled that differently. No. McIntyre? McIntyre. How would you spell McIntyre? M C I N T Y R E. Why does the T Y R E throw me off? Because it's how you spell tire in Europe. Well, he's Irish or Scottish. He's Scottish. That's why. Yeah. McIntyre. I feel like. Yeah. Does, does, That's does how you spell look, tire overseas. That they does don't have not the I. They use the Y. Does not look right to me. Well. McIntyre. Well, now I know. Anyway, name. Drew McIntyre won. That was actually, that was a good elimination match, for the person. We all know I don't like Logan Paul. I think a lot of people don't like Logan Paul. Yes. He's a he's a heel, but he's also kind of the guy who just seems to like want to cause chaos. Yes. He's drawing inside there. I yeah. did enjoy I think it was Drew who went in there and just started wailing on him inside yeah. the cage. Yeah. I don't know if it I can't remember if it was Drew or inside not. Inside the pod. Inside the pod. The one thing we were talking. I'll admit, I didn't watch that match. I kind of skimmed through it. So what happened was, like, what happened? I kind of 
knew where it was heading. So I'm like, I don't really need to watch all this. Drew was up against, I don't, I was it Randy or in, he was up against yes. one last guy. And Logan Paul comes out there with brass knuckles, yeah. lays it on the his opponent. Yes. Knocks him out. Drew gets the yeah. heat pin. Yeah. It's kind of a cheap win, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. That's kind of the shtick they're going with. It's kind of a cheap And they're kind of setting up they're setting Randy up Logan, Orton and Logan Paul. They're, yeah, they're for setting WrestleMania. Up, they're setting up Logan Paul to be part of something. No, there's a setting up him going against that Randy Orton yes. at WrestleMania. Yes. No, you're right. Um, I want to see Logan Paul. Even though Paul. he's been going against Kevin Owens this whole time. I mean, whoever the last person he was up against, Drew McIntyre. Because then again, you have, now you, they basically set up Kevin Owens as a contender to LA, to uh, Logan Paul. And now you're going to change that to Randy Orton. And then you also have LA Knight who's floating around as a possibility. So it's like, how many of these multi-guy matches are you going to have going on? Right. So we'll see. Well, that was interesting. Drew McIntyre, I don't, you know, I, I'm learning about all these guys other than the guys we already talked about. He mm. seems like a cool guy. I saw his little interview from last night. Yeah. Um, And he seems, he's going to be going up against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Freaking Rollins. Seth freaking Rollins. That should be good. I don't know who to root for. Um, honestly, I don't know. I think it, it what all boils down to is how healed is Seth. If Seth's back to being one hundred percent, then I'm assuming he will win. If he's yeah. not, and they don't know like how long it's going to take for him to get to, I think they'll give it to Drew. Yeah. Um, but I also think like you're also setting up Drew to win it. To then set up CM Punk coming back, but then he got go hurt. after Drew. Right, CM was it CM Punk that got hurt at WrestleMania at, at Royal Rumble? Rumble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he got hurt by Drew. Yeah. So I think you're then setting up mm -hmm. that to happen. Okay. But you can then also push that back because by the time CM Punk comes back, it's going to be far enough down the road where you can wait till SummerSlam even. Yes. To give that would Drew be a good one, and then right, you're setting up CM Punk at Survivor Series. So. Um, it's all about the long-term storytelling. I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting Getting down. The directions and where they're heading things. Um, my favorite was the women's elimination chamber. Uh, personally, I think the women's matches are always the best because they move so quickly. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like Becky Lynch, I know she has one of the longest history. Like she's, what's the word I'm looking for? She has the longest history in the WWE. Right, because she's one of the first time she, she's um, one of the first women to win a championship. Am I well, right? Not one of the first, like, but she's she made a, history. She's, she's the first got, double champion. She's got. She's yeah. like Becky Two Belts. She's really um, prominent. She's in, one of the longer tenured, yeah, wrestlers of the of the group that's there now, like um, her, Bailey. A lot of new new people. A lot of newer folks, yeah. So, the one person who came in that like, I was just like blown away about how like. When Tiffany Stratton came in and Tiffy just time. started doing backflips, I time. was like, oh, my God. Yeah, she's been in NXT for a while, and she's been really good. Dude, she came in, the backflips. You watch that, that video. She just comes in, takes one person down. She was a uh, USA gymnast. She was. She made it to... I could tell. Almost to the Olympics. She like lost in like the final trials, I think, or something like that. If I had to place money, I thought she would have won it. Too early. Yeah, because she's new. Yeah. She's a yeah. yeah, she's new. Yeah. But she was really good. Yeah. Um now the other um was it Liv Morgan? Yes. She she's a firecracker. Yes. But that's a that's a term for her. She's a firecracker, but I don't think she had it in her to make it to the end. Again, she's, her story's too early. Yeah. Um and then you had Bianca Bla uh Belair. Belair. Yes. Um and Rachel? Or Ra Raquel, Raquel Rodriguez. Rodriguez, which she didn't really do that much. I don't Raquel think. just came back from she has uh, she come to find out she ended up contracting uh, cellular mast syndrome. Oh, which is like some weird rare condition. I've never heard of that. I didn't hear about it until I heard that she got it. Yeah, um, but yeah, it causes like uh, random swelling in your body. Oh, and like there's no like cure or anything for it yeah 
they can just like give you medicine to like control it, which is why her face was very like swollen mm. looking. I didn't notice that. So yeah, uh, last night she looked like it had come down, which is good. But yeah, so it's just she's. If you see pictures of her from late last year to now, she's lost like a lot of muscle because she mm. couldn't work out when she was sick. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. really super sick. Like they didn't even know what she had or what was going on. I'm with sure her. it took a long time to figure so out. So they're still. I think she's still like coming back from that. So, well, she's just kind of thrown in because there was a another plan I think in place for that spot, but they decided not to go with it. So she kind of was just like the filler person for that. Um, I mean, it was a great match overall. I enjoyed it. I think, I think Becky Lynch was fantastic, but yeah. I think the person is Tiffany Stratton to watch out. Like, yeah. I think. Yeah. There's a lot of, she's going to be, there's a lot of good female wrestlers in NXT right now. Right. That's going to be the women's division and the WWE is going to be get really right. stacked really quickly. Yeah. She's going to be big. There's a lot of young guy, like younger male wrestlers too, that are coming up that are going to be. It's pretty it's pretty crazy. Like yeah. NXT is a fun show to watch for that side of things. The other stuff is kind of tough because you're watching people learning how to do promos and mm-hmm. tell stories well, and That's kind of fun. So it's interesting to see on that side of things, but some of the stuff's very hokey and very, very like kitschy and corny and right. stuff like that. But it's very interesting. It's very fun because then they'll integrate like guys from the main roster or women from the main roster into that. Yeah. And it makes it very interesting. Like Baron Corbin's down there now and the good brothers are down there. Oh yeah. So it's fun to see those guys like interact with the younger group. Um so now for WrestleMania we're gonna see Becky Lynch potentially up against Rhea Ripley. Yeah. Um, I don't even know who I'm gonna go for. Well, I don't we'll know. To, I like them both. We're gonna have to do a pick 'em. We're gonna have yeah. to do it. We're gonna have I love to do a prediction. We'll do it. We are Let's gonna do it. do it. We're gonna do a prediction. Hold show. On co- we'll start a competition. We could do as I know there's a website, there's a group online that does this. They call mm-hmm. it Wrestle League. Mm-hmm. It's called Wrestle Talk. If you're looking for a good, I'll throw a p- the shout out to another YouTube group. If you're looking for good wrestling information, Wrestle Talk, they're guys out of England. Yeah. They do an amazing job. They've been doing it for a while now. Mm-hmm. There's no one else that could catch them. We're mm-hmm. not trying to, nor do we want to no. put forth the amount of effort that they put into their stuff. No, this is like once but a month. But they do like a Wrestle League us. where they go from like, uh, big show to big show. So we go like their seasonal start at WrestleMania and you can play until uh, like the next big four show, mm-hmm. which I think is SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. SummerSlam. Um, or one of those. I can't remember which one, but anyway, so it's like something like that, but yeah, we could, we could do something like that. Like we should do like a, a yeah. season, like a whole year of PLEs. Let's predictions. Uh, yeah. Let's do WrestleMania. Yeah. And then we can we can go from there. Yeah, but I'm saying like keep track of our scores, and then like oh yeah, by, the by the time we get to next WrestleMania. Oh, I see. So what like you're the saying. elimination chamber would be like the final for that season. Yes. So so WrestleMania would be the, the winner. Well, technically, hold on. Isn't WrestleMania kind of like the big period? That's the, to the all period. This? Yeah, it's like this. So that could be like our end of the year. But so, we could start off. So could we start after WrestleMania? Yeah. So WrestleMania would be like our trial run of this. Right. And if we do it and we like it. Then starting with the next, right. then go all the way through to <coughs> WrestleMania. We can do all the way up to, to WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Whoever next year. wins after WrestleMania next year, yeah, because I feel is like the champion and the other guy's the loser. I kind of feel like WrestleMania is what you work up to, and then everything resets after mm. WrestleMania. And you I do th- know enough people where we could, you know, what it should be: whoever loses has to take a chop from a real professional wrestler. <laughs> I've done it before. It's not fun. <sighs> I know people. I can make this happen. You know, it'd be funny. You know, it would be great. You'd have to be willing to do this. I think I would be willing to do this. That we do it. The loser has to wrestle in no. one of those those shows. No. One of those local shows. No, you got to be a wrestler. No, you have to come up with a name. No. We would get hurt. You come up with a name. I think if we could possibly do something, they would work to... with you to make sure you didn't get no, I hurt. I think we could do a thing where we have to do like uh, we could come up with something. I'll All come right. up with something, right. but we'll we don't think something. us wrestling is a good idea. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny at our, at our age? Yeah, and I know with my athletic skills at this point. Yeah, at yeah. where I'm at at this point athletically, I know. 
I probably not fair the best enough. idea. Fair enough. Maybe if we were I don't younger. want to end up in the hospital. Yeah, okay. With a, like a leg decapitation. I, then I something. don't want to take a karate chop or a or It's a just sleep. a slap. You, it's not as bad as you think it is. It's also not as fun as you think it is. Okay. It's not as bad as you think it is. All right. Well, maybe we could do that. Yeah. Or something. I've had it done to me before. It's not terrible. All right. It's not fun, but it's not terrible. <laughs> You're really selling it, Mark. <laughs> I'm just saying that. <laughs> Oh. They do it for fun. That's the fun thing. Is yeah, that's the yeah. funny thing is that after shows when they do get together and stuff, they just do it like it's some fun thing, and they just like yeah, just slap each other like it's a hilarious. Because they, they're and they used laugh to about it. it. And yeah. It's like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They're all walking around with like like bruised chests, and I'm like, what? I don't want to be a part of this. All right, Mark. Well, I had a great time watching Illumination Chamber, and I had a great time talking about it with you and learning yeah. more. And you know, what we could do is, is we could go to fun. one of these shows. I think we should do that one of these days. So you, you want you want to hear something? They're coming to Hartford Monday Night Raw in May. I know they are. Yeah, we can go. I can get us. Uh, I know a person where we might possibly be able to get. Yeah, we can do that. How about if you get the tickets? I'll talk to you about it after. All right. I got the blink tickets. So no, I'll, 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 if you're you, going to be aggravated, but I tell you about it. But we'll talk about it after. I would be aggravated. Yes. Why? I'll, I'll tell you about it after. What, right, it's right. at the XL Center. Yeah, I know. Just think about that and realize the connections I have at the XL Center. Oh, well, what's what's that? I at? can't tell you about it on there. All right, I would go to that though. I think my brother Tony would go. He's a huge wrestler. All right. Guy. All right. Anyway, I did see that. It's, it's May fifth. Yeah, I know it's right on my anniversary. So I, don't I know thought if I could pull it. Around. It's on May fifth. I don't know if I could pull that card, but we'll Cinco see. de Mayo. Cinco. That's a good, good one. Yeah. 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 I saw. I saw on Facebook yesterday. Of course, it's Facebook knows I'm watching wrestling It's now. a different experience. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, because you don't have the... Watching it live is not as fun as seeing it uh, on TV. May 6th, Josh is saying? May 6th. It was a Monday. Yeah. The Monday of Raw. That's Monday. The yeah, Monday of Raw. Sorry. I was off by a day. My anniversary is on a Saturday. That's what made me think. I was like, um, that makes no sense. But, you know, it's like a sporting event. I prefer watching them on TV because you have the color You know, the, yeah, the announcers. Yes. Yeah. 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 But it'd still be cool it's, to it's go. It's a fun experience. Yeah, to go once. Yeah, I was right? talking about going to like a local wrestling show. Oh, those are fun. I've been to those. Yeah. I've seen them. I've met, I I like literally like you can walk from your grandfather's house to like a place that does them. I which I'm surprised Tony never went to because it's literally like within walking distance. Well, I when I've done to RetroCon, they always have wrestling. Yeah, there, those remember? guys are always yeah. yeah. They do the shows by your grandfather's. Place. Um, but I was talking more aligned with yeah, Raw. Yeah, because yeah. they are coming yeah. to Hartford. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we should wrap this up. Yes. It's been a great show, Mark. It has been. I appreciate you. This is the most we've talked about wrestling in a long time. Isn't it nice? It's interesting. I'm not used to it yet. I still feel like it's always been, for me, wrestling's always been that nerdy thing that I'm really into that none one else in the group is into. Yeah. but is So I've always felt like kind of weird talking about it. Like when me and Matt Ryan talk about it, yeah. I could really get deep into it. Yes. So it was this fun. could get dangerous because I could really get into it deep. It was fun talking to Matt about it. Yeah. and Because, see, I come at it from a different angle than I think most people. He I come me. at it from the storyline thing. Yes. I'm very into yes. the storylines yes. of it. I was telling Matt, I'm like, I, I go, I was watching it and I was fully entertained and yeah. I was on the edge of my seat and I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah. I don't know everything that's happening right now. I'm too new. Yeah. Too green. Yeah. Um, but I like it. Yeah. It's fun. And it's like you kiss the girl and you like it. Yeah. You like the taste of her cherry laps with the cherry I, lipstick. I um I eat <laughs> <laughs> I eat crow for all the years being I can't believe yeah. you still watch because I you know what? Like I said, I will say too, you I are did, you are coming back in. Yeah, I'm coming at back. probably one of the best times. Well Matt Ryan said that. in WWE. He says there's a lot of new people and there's yeah. a lot of new things happening yeah. that you can get yourself attached yeah. to. And it's a lot it's a way better yes. product now than it was. Mm. Say even two years ago, right, right, yeah. In the rocks back, yeah, which is as Hollywood rock. So I mean, it's like you can't. You know what though? The rock being the heel, the rock being the bad guy, is really good for business right now. It is. It's really good for business. It's weird for me though, because it's really strange to see him. Everybody's got play a bad guy socks, signs, it's and a, then like go on to like. Have to talk about promoting his football league. Well, you on remember other Hollywood Hulk Hogan when, every, when he weird. turned when when Hulk Hogan. But he Hogan wasn't turned? like running a football organization. He was promoting Thunder in Paradise. Yeah, back then. It's but not like it's the same thing. When Hulk Hogan was good, he had movies. And then we went yeah, bad. But he, he wasn't was really doing, doing movies, movies that anyone watched. I know. He was doing like, you know, I know those kid movies. Yeah, but he's still doing them. Yeah, um, but it's like The Rock now has to like is going to have to in the next couple of weeks. 
be Thanks. promoting WrestleMania. Yeah. And then go into like promoting the beginning of the UFL season and be on like regular TV and have to do this heel persona. That's but also like so Well, that's what football. he's gotta do. So it's very interesting to me to see that dynamic and see how that's gonna work. Yeah. I'm interested to see what's gonna happen in the next three weeks with him being involved. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be so. good. It's gonna be interesting. It'll be interesting to see actual like people on the television as opposed to having proxies do the storytelling. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Yes, there you go. Um, Because usually it's like Paul Heyman and Uso and Solo who have to push the storyline forward. Right, right. Because Roman's too busy. If they're not not there. Not being on the show. Right. If they're not there, it's weird. Yeah. 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 Um, So anyway, I don't know. We're We're wrapping this up. We're wrapping it up. Yes. It's almost an hour and a half in here. Mark, it was great. I had fun. I had fun. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did it. That's good. I'm glad to have you part of the... uh, that's good. Part of the frat or whatever we call ourselves. I don't know what they... Wrestling fans. You know what, though? The fraternity, oh, if you will. To go back to what you're saying. Oh. There are things I like, too, where you feel like you're like you're the only one who's into it. Yes. And you almost feel a little bit protective because you're like, well, it's my thing and nobody is into it. I get that. I yeah. get that. I yeah. get that. And listen, I, I'm glad I got back into it. It's fun. Also... I, it gives me something to talk to Tony. Me and him were texting about it. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. My grandfather, you know, other than him going off of tangents on other things I don't want to talk about, yeah. I can talk about yeah, this. Yeah, you actually have something to talk about as opposed to politics. Yeah. Which is great. Yes. Yeah, It's exactly. all good. It's yeah. a win-win. Yeah. It was the only thing I have to say, and Josh should know this for a fact, too. The one thing I do miss but also don't miss about my dad is when we would watch with him, he would always just say things that would drive me crazy i had to curtail what i was about to say uh like if a guy was about to do a move or ju- run the ropes he'd be like he's gonna lose it he's gonna get taken out he's gonna get knocked down right here watch and then he get do it he's like told you so see you do this is stupid you why do- are you watching this <laughs> and he would do that to me while we were watching the show and i'm like if you don't want to watch it go into the room there's plenty of other rooms to watch tv in. why are you sitting here but he's like, uh, I like it. It's fun. I like doing it. But he literally had done this since I was a kid. Yeah. It's been a thing. And his his father would do it even when I was younger. His dad would do the same Mark, thing. you do it But sometimes. he'd watch it every time. You do it sometimes, too. I know. It creeps in. You do, it's creeps you in. do it the things but it's you funny. don't like. It's hilarious. And you do that same stuff. So I, I, I get yeah. it. I get it's it. It's a genetic thing. But it's just funny because like my dad, like I hear it now when I watch the shows now, I still hear it. Yeah. yeah like yeah. when Tiffany was coming off the thing. Yeah. Or do whatever flips. He was like, nope, she's going to lose it. She's going to crash and burn right here. And then she's crash and burn it. I was like, see, told you so. And I just hear the old man say that in my head. And it's like, yeah. Can I shut up? <laughs> but she killed it. <laughs> Let me enjoy this. Because <laughs> it always be in a match where you'd be getting into it. Yes. He wouldn't say it all during the show. <laughs> and then he'd wait until like the biggest the match. The big one. Where it was like really like intense yeah. and you're getting into the match. Yeah. And there's some matches where you just don't even, you lose yourself. Right. In what's going on. And then you start getting into it. And yeah. you, like you were saying, get to the edge of your seat. Yes. And then that's when he would John chime in with, oh, you know he's going to lose it right here, right? And then the guy would follow him. I told, I told you so. You so. I'm like, this is stupid. Why watch this? Why you? He's like, go away. Dude, I like, was I so in. races with you and be like, you see this guy? He's going to wreck right here. He's going to lose it. <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> It was like, how would you like if I did that to you? Mark, you do it too. You do it. Wow. I know. It's crazy. It's a, it's a heredity. You know what you're going to do. Yeah. But anyways, that's it for us. All right. We'll be Let's back next week. Uh, we'll have something to talk about. I don't know what's going on, but we'll figure out something. Yeah. Uh, and come back for it. Uh, we'll see you this weekend in Manchester. Yes. At the uh, Toys and Collectibles show. Yes. Manchester Army and Navy Club. Yes. On Elm Street. Um, everything's on Facebook. Yeah, we'll have more info next week about uh, CliffsCon. Yes. After Dark. After Dark. The big one. So see you then. And as always, be safe, be well, and be kind. And rewind. See you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>